what's going on everyone? Let's do a quick update and got a little surprise today with something I've been neglecting and that is starting that guy. Will it start today? I don't know. Let's see. It's been being neglected. Let's take a walk around. She gets no love, but I don't know. Let's see. Look at all that damn dust. It's a bunch of pollen here. It's actually not too bad, but let's have a look. Well, battery's not dead. I'll tell you what is dead. Is this damn E92 M3. That battery's deader than hell. All right, let's get in here, man. All right. So this is 20,000. <laughs> This is a 2018 M4. Some mild mods to it. Got the Boot Mod 3 stuff going on. Active Auto Works mid pipe, full Remus exhaust. Uh, let's see. Got some lowering springs, some spacers. Other than that, dude, is this thing gonna run? I don't know. I haven't started it in weeks. Oh, it does run. Let's open the valves. shut the window uh, open valves is pretty damn loud but we're gonna let this thing idle for a little bit but it does run that's good I need to stop neglecting this damn thing because if not it's gonna die but I've been working on the s2000 over there and not showing this guy some love oh I will say one thing that's pretty sweet is um I ended up getting a a one-off here custom short shifter so this thing is legit like that's third so for any of you BMW fans out there first Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. But yep, pretty good. But that's a uh, the 20, 25 or twenty four percent reduction in throw. Lowered it down a half an inch, and man, this this has made me enjoy the car big time. Because I will say, before I actually got this short shifter in, hated the car. I just been spoiled by the S two thousand gearbox. But this M four and a six speed wouldn't have it any other way. The E ninety two is DCT. And I had an M2 for about a year. That was a dumb mistake. I mean, the car was good. It was nimble. It was fun. But man, six speed in the M4. Love this damn car so much. Such a blast to drive, especially with the, um, the Boot Mod uh, 3 tune on it. So just not going to go full retard on this car like I did the S2000. That, uh, keep it reliable and fun. All right, so it looks like she's finally got a nice little idle. So this is the valves open. Again, this is not... Just close it, but then you might be able to hear a difference. Oh yeah, with the Remus exhaust, like sounds sounds great. Love it to death. You know, finally saved up some money, bought it. But in um, with the valves closed, it's like stock. I absolutely love it. You know, I was gonna go on you know the cheaper route and buy one of the exhausts that didn't have that uh, feature, but now having this, love it because I'll be on a road trip. Boom, close the valves, you're good. Somebody wants to have some fun rolling around the streets and stuff, and uh, you know, just want to hear the Remus, I'll just open it up, put it in M mode. So yeah, if you're questioning whether or not you should spend the money to get the valve, uh, valve option, uh, I think, so Remus has one, uh, Dynan, I believe they have that option as well. Decided against the Dynan, spent a little bit more money and got this. The only thing I don't like about Remus is the M tips are expensive, and I didn't get the carbon fiber. but. Love the freaking car to death. It's such a fun, such a blast to drive. All right, so let's get out of this thing. I gotta watch my head. Need to damn lift up here. <laughs> Tell you what, man. Come around, come around. All right, let's go. So, come around the other side here. Look at the M3. It's my baby. So the M3 was my uh, dream car since it came out, and I absolutely love that. It is raw V8. Torqueless, <laughs> torqueless monster, but that thing just sounds so good. But I got to get another battery for it. But uh, enough about that. So um, today, you know, we're gonna. I keep making. I didn't. Well, I never promised anything. Let's just get that straight. But got the AEM IAT sensor there. So somebody had asked in the comments on uh, I think it was one of the Facebook groups of why we didn't want to put it on. The passenger side. So, if anything in this video, here's a takeaway. Let's talk about it. So, you don't want to put the intake air temperature sensor, IAT sensor, 
on like and especially for this turbo car on the passenger side which is the turbo side or hot before actually going to the intercooler and the reason why is because the ecu is going to read these temps and use uh, it in its correction tables and if you don't have it at least close enough to the intake manifold you're not going to get realistic uh, air temperatures and so the goal is to have it as close as you can to the intake uh, in this case is 06 and up it's not let me take a seat and in this case um in 06 and up is not in the intake manifold which prior to that it was which sucked because the heat soak is ridiculous so i mean i, I would be sitting at the light i'd i swear i'd see 150 150 you know 160 degrees and as much as you would try to play with the correction tables you know adding fuel taking away fuel it was just, it was always such a pain because it was only hot in it because as you can see that's cast aluminum and holds a lot of heat. So why did I put it on the driver's side? So I put it on the driver's side because it's the closest that I can get without putting it in here, which would look pretty stupid. Um, you know, the, the difference between here and being down here is probably gonna be very minor. So not really concerned about it, but I definitely don't wanna have it as a nice weather. Now, if this was a dedicated race car, maybe I'll get a little bit closer. Um, you know, to the to the actual uh, throttle body there, but for what it is here, this is perfect. And the good thing about it is because it's not getting a heat soak, it should stay fairly accurate, meaning it's not gonna have a swing. So if you come up to a light, you're at idle, and then all of a sudden, you know, your intake temperatures were, let's just say 90 degrees, right? Because it was 90 out in perfect world. Um, that throttle body closes, man, that heat just builds and builds and builds. And, you know, it's not to say the car's not gonna run great because it's kind of like a false positive. So it's not, yeah, the, the, the temperature in the intake manifold is hot, right? But as soon as that throttle body opens, it cools pretty quick. Or I should say the OEM one's kind of slow. So I've, you know, seen that the AEM responds a lot faster, which is good um, because when you're tuning a car on the dyno, like when I used to tune my last one, it would take a long time to see that air temperature change. And while I'm not going to do a run unless it goes back to the intake temperature or air temperature that it wasn't last run. That's just for consistency phase. So um, you don't you don't want an IAT temperature that's you know 140 on the dyno because it gets hot, and then try to do another run compared to one that was you know a 90 to 100 degrees. Why? Well, it's just going to skew um, uh, the amount of fuel that may put in it. If your correction tables aren't right. You're just you're just not going to have consistent runs, and consistency is key. So today, again, plan is to maybe get it running i do have to finish the gauge install so last night i was up for a long time but finally got the pillar in here so my plan because i didn't want to hack up the the factory pillar here so what i did was and th this is just a mock-up here but I, I was able to actually if you look at this if you hold this up pull it up right it actually sits pretty good and flush. Now, how you're supposed to do this, and, and granted, this you know all this stuff will be uh, will be sitting right. But if you take a look at the OEM pillar, you're really supposed to put it over this, right? Well, the problem is when you start putting it over this piece, you get a little tear it up. You start to get excess trim here right and what it does is it creates like this double layer you're going to have this in this case is auto meter you'll have the automated auto meter sitting one the autometer one sitting right here and then this is here and it just doesn't look flush i hated it on my last car you got the little you know got to drill holes in these i hate drilling into stock parts again i wanted to keep this car well to a point where i could go back stock if i wanted to but drill the hole is in here and then push those little black tabs in to hold it. It just it just didn't look right. It would pop up. I'm looking right here. So when this thing sets up in here like this, I'm sure many of us have been there. So it would pop up right here just because it was thick. You have the stock pillar, and then you have this sitting on top of it. Well, use your imagination. It just doesn't look right. So um, got the Innovit SCG one. This does boost control and wideband but I'm only going to use the wideband. I'm not going to use the boost control on it just yet, just because I find it faster to turn a knob on the Gretty. This is just a placeholder. It's an old boost gauge I had, so I'm going to order a Innovit. Innov I thought it was innovative. 
Anyway, but uh, oil pressure and oil temperature uh, sensor gauge, just because it's, it's hot, right? Turbo car, ethanol, you know, over time breaks down the oil. I just want to make sure that the oil is in good condition. So definitely monitor oil temperature, oil pressure. You know, I don't really trust the dummy light, even though we use it. I don't think I've ever seen it on, which is good news because I think if it does come on, <laughs> it's a little too late. But yeah, today we may start it, we may not. Uh, I got to finish the stuff on the exhaust, welding up the uh, three inch pipe uh, provided by my buddy. Uh, you can check him out. Uh, YouTube page is Show Phil, but he just gave me some stainless three inch here to use. And so I got the downpipes done. Well, the extension of the downpipe that was provided by Straight Line Motorsports. Um, and then I had to connect, you know, make another S bend and then the exhaust going out back. So just gonna, it's just gonna be open three inch out until I can get creative and figure something out. Cause the rear bumper in this, in the AP2, I'm a demonstration kind of guy. All right, you have these gaudy, <laughs> gaudy cutouts when there's nothing there, but not gaudy if the OEM exhaust is there. So uh, I'm gonna have to figure something out. I'm thinking of buying uh, an AP1 bumper since it's 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 not as defined, I guess we would say pronounced uh, as far as the cutouts go for the exhaust tip. So uh, I think I'll end up doing like a delete on on that. It, it seems a lot easier to do body work. Plus, again, not doing body work on this car. Uh, so I'll buy you know some beat up used parts. Um, have my buddy Chris finish it up, repaint it, and uh, maybe delete those sections out there. Use some fiberglass or so. But that's the update that I have right now. So yeah, if you like these videos, like, subscribe, and definitely stay tuned to what we're gonna have coming up in the future.